tonight, the uh, ladies wanted me to announce uh, the time to start considering our missionaries that we are going to help with Christmas this year. We've selected two families, or I'm assuming somebody selected them. I guess the ladies did. It doesn't matter whoever it is. Anyway, we're going to uh, take on the, uh, the Miller family. They're the ones that we uh, took on. They go as missionaries to Mexico. They're out of, De uh, out of De uh, Decatur. Uh, and uh, that's a family, and I think they got six kids. There are eight of them all together. They got eight kids. There's ten of them all. Wow, let me count. You are correct. Eight kids. Wow. That's, called, that's what's called having your quiver full. Mm -hmm. Amen. Anyway, uh, we uh, are going to be uh, taking gifts. We have a, a list, as we normally do, that will be posted on the bulletin board that you can sign up for as to what each of them might desire to have and the sizes, if it's clothing and uh, different things like that. And we will put their picture with that list on the uh, board. And if you just go ahead and sign up for it. Now, there's some of the things that, gentlemen, you'll know what it is, and maybe the ladies will or they will not. Uh, they might not. Uh, for example, one of the things that's desired is uh, an, auto, an automotive 12-volt battery charger and maintainer. Uh, so you may know what that is. I know the men do, but gentlemen, you might want to jump on that one. Amen. Anyway, we'll put that up there. And then we're going to also uh, take on Roy and, and, and Anna Hendrickson, our missionaries to England. Uh, we're not going to send gifts. Uh, the condition of things nowadays, we're going to, what we're going to do is send cards uh, with just gift cards. Uh, and that way they can do whatever they want to with it. Uh, and we'll post all of this on the bulletin board, and it does not tell me when you have to have this all put together for. Where's Kate? Okay. Uh, no, it does not tell me. You're talking about the Millers. Miller. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll get this all out there, and I'm sure I didn't give you the information as Kate would have liked me to give it to you, but she's not in here to straighten me out and help me along, so you got what you got. Uh, we'll put this on the bulletin board, and you can read it. She's got it all typed out. You know, Kate's very efficient. It's all typed out. You can read it and then do whatever uh, you would like to do. Okay. Uh, and then uh, also please remember to continue to pray for uh, Brother Gary. Uh, Pollock, he's recovering from knee surgery. Talked to him today, said it was uh, uh, doing better. Uh, and uh, he actually said he thought he might try to come tonight, and I discouraged that. Uh, I think that's a little bit premature. Uh, but uh, anyway, keep him in your prayers. And uh, also, uh, don't forget uh, to pray for our, our church and to pray for our services coming up on Sunday. We are in the Christmas season, and I'm preaching uh, a series of messages. Please pray about them. Uh, I'm working on one for this Sunday uh, where he, his name shall be called Counselor. Uh, and uh, so help me with that as, and pray for me with that as I'm, I'm putting that together. <clears throat> so if you would tonight, turn to the book of uh, Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. We are studying on the Sermon on the Mount and have come up to where the Lord is uh, instructing in prayer. We're studying through the model prayer in Matthew chapter 6. Uh, uh, and uh, we've been working on it for a couple of weeks. Our last lesson, we dealt with God's uh, will being established both in heaven. We know God's will is in heaven, do we not? Uh, uh, but our desire is that that will might be found on the earth as well, uh, and that He might be the one who is in authority amongst men. Amen. This evening we're going to move on uh, uh, and take our move our attention to verses 11 uh, down through verses 13, and we will incorporate 14 and 15 into it as well when we get into verse 12 if we get that far uh, tonight. So we're going to just take a moment and. Uh, read this Lord's Prayer, this model prayer one more time uh, so that we might get right straight into our lesson. If you'll stand with me 
uh, pray or, or read with me from verses uh, 9. It says, After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Aren't you looking forward to a time when God actually will set and rule on this earth and things will be of a holy nature? I mean, that's going to be awesome. Amen. And then verse 11 says, uh, uh, Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. <clears throat> for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And then I want to read verses 14 and 15, which actually uh, we're going to draw back up and put in with verses uh, uh, 12, uh, because that is a, verse 12 is a causative verse. That is, if we desire forgiveness, we, not, we must be willing to forgive. Uh, and so he says in verse 14, For if uh, ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye <clears throat> forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you so much. This portion of the model prayer, uh, we will address our turning our attention to the involvement of God. We've been praising God. We've been desiring God's presence and God's will on the earth. But now we're going to start, we're going to turn the model prayer to involving God in our day by day life. Amen. The Bible says in verses uh, uh, 11, uh, give us this day our daily uh, bread. There is a, uh, a prayer involved here with putting God in charge of our day-by-day -day existence. Amen. The believer, uh, uh, when he says, Lord, give us, he's turning to the Lord and looking uh, to God in total dependence upon God. Not looking to resolve his own necessities or his own needs, but asking God to be him who supplies uh, for us as a father does for his children, uh, uh, taking care of them. This, this idea of dependence on the Lord Jesus Christ uh, is is going to be dis demonstrated here in verse 11 uh, uh, toward the physical world around us. We live in the world, but we're not of the world. We're not to work uh, in the world and participate in the world as the world or the lost man does. We're to be in the world, but not of the world. We're to walk in the, in the things of God. We're to walk by the leadership of God. And so we uh, uh, turn to God and we are dependent upon Him for our fleshly or earthly needs. Amen. Uh, uh, and it, it just says, give us this day our daily bread. And then that's in verses 11. And then when we look in verses 12, it says, and forgive us our debts. Not only are we uh, dependent upon God for our daily needs, for our daily bread, but we're also dependent upon God for the spiritual man's strengthening, for our ability to be victorious in this life as a child of God. As we say, God, uh, uh, if you will, uh, uh, forgive us and allow us a, a, a to be holy before you and give us uh, your strength. And we'll talk about that when we get to it because that verse often is misunderstood, I think. Uh, but we're going to just start and we're going to uh, begin in verses 11. And it may be as far as we get tonight because this is a very interesting verse, though it's so very, very short. The Bible just simply says, uh, give us uh, uh, this day our daily bread. And we are dependent upon God to supply our every need. The Bible talks about uh, this idea of God or uh, praying for God to give us our daily bread. The word bread, as you understand, uh, just means uh, the supply or the necessities of life. It's not like what we put butter on and eat. Amen. But it means everything that comes into our life. Give us this day our daily needs or supply for us that which is required uh, that we might live day by day. Amen. And so we are recognizing our dependence upon the Lord uh, daily. Philippians chapter 4 verses 19 says, But my God shall supply all your needs according uh, uh, to His riches and glory uh, uh, by Christ Jesus. Amen. My God will supply all your needs. Amen. I think the biggest problem in Christians' lives today is we forget who's in charge. We forget who the supply is, and sometimes we think it's us, that we must go out and, and do this or do that, that we've got to gain this thing or gain that thing, and if we don't go get it, we won't have it. Listen, when we depend upon God, we are uh, trusting Him with our day-by-day -day existence, and we're praying uh, for Him to uh, bless us with the riches from heaven, not the riches of the world. 
Amen? And God uses the things of the world to bless us with, uh, but when they come through the hands of God, they come not just as a supply for our day-by-day -day life, but they come as a blessing and as, and as our Father giving unto us as one who loves His children. Amen? And we recognize that when we pray, give us this day our daily bread. Amen? Our bread then is that, is that necessity of life. And here we are going to recognize how dependent we are upon God. And the truth be, be told, folks, there is no good thing comes into our life except that God give it. Now that doesn't mean that there's not things that come into our life, but they'll not have God's blessing. They'll not have God's uh, uh, fingerprints or God's supply upon them if we go out and gain them ourselves. And by the way, when we go get the daily need of our life for ourselves, and we recognize our own self as getting it, we cease to be thankful to God for His supply. Amen? It's a request which comes only by a humble heart. Give us this day, recognizing He is in charge. A humble heart. You know, humility uh, puts away pride, or pride will destroy hum humility. Amen? And we ought to be humble before God. Amen? Uh, uh, this attitude of ungratefulness has infected our world. This attitude of, uh, of selfishness has overtaken, yes, even the church today. And I think that it happens or is, ha is happening because we fail to understand uh, that we are uh, uh, to be humble before God and receive His will uh, into our life as blessings. And sometimes our will doesn't exactly line up with His will. Amen? But when we pray and say, God, you give to us your uh, supply, your understanding of what we need, we depend upon you, we receive from you, and with great thanksgiving, whatever your will is. And if it's contrary to what I think, then Lord, let me lean on you and let me walk uh, according to an obedient child. Amen? A failure to understand that God is in supply daily uh, will cause us to not be grateful at all. Amen. We uh, uh, ought to pray, give us this day our daily bread, uh, uh, and we ought to understand uh, that God is the one. Look in Matthew chapter 6, and when we say, God, give us this day our daily bread. Yes, I'm on. Uh, the first thing it's going to do is allow us to put away worry. Amen. Amen? Right. It allows me to not be concerned about what tomorrow may bring, but just live for the, for the day, live in the day, and enjoy what God's given me, and be in fellowship with God, and being thankful to God every day that I walk on this earth. In Matthew chapter 6, uh, we'll get to this again, I'm sure, when we get over there, but look in verse 31. And you'll see what happens when you uh, say to God, give us this day our daily bread. Look at verse 31. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or whether, uh, wherewithal shall we be clothed? For all these things do the uh, uh, Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have all these needs. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. When we draw nigh to God, God supplies the very best for us, Amen. according to His will. Now, I'm going to tell you the truth. Sometimes we desire things that would not be good for us. And sometimes when God does not allow us to have that, we almost become a little bit upset with God because we think not only do we, ought, ought we to have it, but we are worth it. Amen? We just went through a, a, a pretty big scare yesterday. And uh, when I got the text, my heart fell right down into my, uh, into my shoes. Uh, and I got a text from Alex, uh, or it might have been from Miss Hastings first, I don't know, that said the little one, uh, Mama walked in and she was eating rat poison. Haven't been watching your text, have you? I saw some of it, but I didn't see the beginning. Yeah. And it just totally scared me. And, and you know, uh, I think that the little girl not having the understanding that mother and daddy has, pick that up, and by the way, they make, I don't know what kind it was, but I'm sure it was probably uh, decon. Isn't that the one? Yeah, decon. Uh, and if you've ever, have you ever smelled that? You ever wonder why a rat eats that? Smells sweet. Smells sweet. And 
And she put that in her mouth and started, and mama comes and takes it away from her. Have you ever taken something away from a child when they thought they wanted it? But you're sitting there saying, no, don't you know that's not good for you, but I want it. Don't you know that the long range effects of what you're desiring is not good for you, and I will not let you, to have, let you have that because I love you. I will not let your desire harm you uh, uh, with what you uh, are going to put into your body or something that you're going to put into your life. That's, That's exactly how God works. Amen. Amen. Amen? But sometimes we're just like a little child, aren't we? And we say, God, I want, I would like to have this. And we say, God, uh, give me this day my daily bread, and this is what I need. And God says, no, you really don't need that, because I can see the end result that you can't see. And God says, no, and rather than we, us saying, thank you, Lord, for whatever it is that you're uh, uh, holding this back, it's good for me. You're not doing anything to hurt me. And God says, I'm in charge, and you must humble yourself before me and receive my will. Amen? <clears throat> My little brother that was killed in a car wreck some years ago was, in those days, uh, nobody in my family likes cats. I'm sorry. Uh, in my life, I hardly tolerate dogs, and I really don't like cats. I'm sorry if you have cats. But my sister-in-law his wife then, my wife now, <laughs> were in Ennis, and they were living in a trailer house that, uh, while they were starting the church there at Bible Baptist in Ennis. I think it's called Ambassador Baptist now. And however it might happen, under the trailer, some cats got up under the trailer, and I mean, you know how cats are. They breed cats. And you've got two cats, and before long you've got 50 cats. And they had all kinds of cats, and my brother loves cats, but he knew they had too many cats. So he was going to, I guess he tried to catch some of them. I don't know this, I, huh? They were wild, and you couldn't catch them. Yeah. Well, it just so happened that my brother changed the antifreeze or something in his car. And he drained it out in a pan. And he just, you know how we men are, scooted it over by the house and said, I'll get rid of that in a day or two, or whenever I get to it. And uh, needless to say, there were no more cats around. Amen? Because that antifreeze, that green looking antifreeze, now they got red, I don't know what that'll do to you, but the green antifreeze sat over there, and if you've, if you've ever changed antifreeze, you know if it splashes on you or a little of it gets in your mouth, and that happens, you know it does. It's sweet. And I guess those cats, boy, they liked it. Wouldn't you like to have somebody sitting there saying, cat? Don't drink that. I know you think it's good. I know you think this is going to make you rest tonight because you're going to have a belly full of sweetness. But what it's going to do is kill you. That broke my little brother's heart that that happened. But took care of the cat problem. Amen? Do you understand the devil is putting the antifreeze out all the time? He's enticing your flesh. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. He's enticing you to do that which will be harmful unto you. And we have to humble ourselves before God and say to God, God, you direct my path that it might be well with me. That's what Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 is all about. Lean not into your own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct thy paths. Because He knows what's down that path better than you do. That's good. Amen? <clears throat> Every believer has his portion. Notice what it says. Give us. Don't you like that? The apostle, when he writes this model prayer, when Jesus is giving this model prayer, he doesn't, he doesn't say pray, give me. He says, give us. He's praying that Christendom might have a, a, a consistency of the blessing of God in our life according to our need, but all of us have our place at the table of God. All of us have our place in the hand of supply that God gives unto us. It may be different from one to the other, but we're everyone dependent upon a, a God who cares for us. Amen? I like that. Because the number one thing that does for us is it takes away us praying just for our need. 
It takes away us becoming selfish in our petitions to God. God give me, God give me, God give me. But Lord, give to us equally. <clears throat> in the family of God, the Bible tells me that God's not a respecter of persons. Amen? But He is a loving and caring God. And He supplies with, to each one of us, not necessarily, if I dare use this word because it's a word people like today, equally. If He gives you a new car, He's not going to give you one. But He's going to give to each of us according to our need. Not to our want, but according to our need. Now it doesn't mean, the Bible says God will give you the desires of your heart. Not just the need, but the desires of your heart. But the desire part are those things that God gives to us when we pray for them, that we might glorify Him and not lavish them upon our own lust. But those are the things that God gives to us in the areas of blessings. Amen? But God is accountable to your life and to my life as my Heavenly Father to take care of my daily bread. Amen? Amen? Sometimes we might pray, God give me this day my daily bread, and it may not even be what you were thinking it was going to be. Amen? Have you ever had God just give you something before you even needed it? Give you something before you even prayed about it? Amen? That when something uh, uh, comes, sometimes I think we get something unexpected, the first thing we ought to do is ask God why He gave it. The other day, <clears throat> I got a, uh, a car, uh, an envelope. It was from uh, Lowe's Department Store Lumberyard in Decatur. And normally I would have just throw it away. But the good Lord said, you ought to might want to open this one. I don't know why I opened it. I really don't. But I opened it. There's a letter in there. I thought it was going to be an advertisement trying to sell me something or da 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 And it said, enclosed is a gift card for $350. And I read the letter. And it said something to the effect, my wife read it, but I think it said, it's a reimbursement from buying out a warranty or something of that nature. And I told my wife, I said, I don't have any idea what these people are talking about. And she said, well, so we'll call them. So we did. I don't know, we made a couple of calls before we finally got a hold of somebody that knew what they were talking about. And we gave them the card number. We told them everything about it. And she came back and said, well, it's been a several years ago. Several years ago, and it's just now coming back to me? Wow. See, God can bless you in, in such a way. Now, I would say that that's a blessing. Amen. That came in so unexpectedly. And we've decided that the best we can figure out by what they told us, we bought a refrigerator from Lowe's some years ago, and it had an automatic ice maker in it, one of those that's in the door that does not work. And we had them out, you know, because we bought the warranty on it and all of that. And we had them out and had them out and had them out. And they'd come out and they'd fix it and they'd go. They'd just, it wouldn't last a day. Finally, we took it out. Put it in our garage. And it's my overflow ice box. Uh, refrigerator. Ice boxes you put ice in. But in the refrigerator, we keep drinks and stuff in it. Because the ice maker just never did work. I guess. They sent me back my warranty. That's what we figured out based on what they told us. Amen? See, God is going to bless you and give you things, even when you're not expecting it. If He'll do that, don't you think He'll take care of your daily bread? Yeah. Amen? <laughs> give us this daily bread. Our daily needs. As you understand it, Lord, bring it to us. These needs might be physical, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. They also might be spiritual. Amen? 
He says this, give us this day our daily bread. I think the best thing about that portion of the prayer is that when we humble ourselves before God, whatever He gives to us, we're thankful for. When we do not humble ourselves before God, we begin to analyze God's giftings or God's supply. I've, I've, God's been blessing me recently. Amen. And we're dealing about physical things, so let's talk about physical things. I got a deal on my email the other day. <clears throat> and you get, a, you, know, you get all these advertisements. And I got this one from, I think it was Amazon, I think. And they said, you're such a good customer. That is not good. They said, we want to give you a gift. I said, wow, I'm up for that. They said, if you will just get online and pay the shipping, $6.76, we're going to give you a watch. Now, that's Amazon, folks. This is not somebody trying to sell you something. So I said, what's six dollars and seventy some odd cents? So I punched it in there and gave them the, paid the shipping on it. Well, the watch came. I was not expecting much for six dollars and seventy six cents. And they had on there, this watch is valued up to a hundred dollars. I said, yeah. My brother bought one of those watches in New York once, and when you wound it up, it went tick, 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 tick. You could hear it all over the room. Took it to a jeweler, and whoever it was that sold it to him. That's another long story. Had actually had the jewels taken out of it, and it was just sitting there running on nothing. But anyway, the watch came in, expecting nothing, expecting nothing. And when I opened the box, it's actually a pretty nice watch. Came with a leather band. I said, wow. You see, when you don't put any expectations on anything God's doing for you, you be grateful for what you get. Amen. Amen. But I also found that when you're not, or when you put expectations on God's giving of your daily bread, you say, well, you know, I can't eat bread unless it's wheat. I can't drive a Ford. I've got to have a Chevrolet. And I can't drive anything more than a couple years old. Amen? We begin to put stipulations on what God understands is our daily need. Amen? And because of that, we oftentimes do not take the time to thank God for His supply because we're not receiving it in a humble spirit. My wife continually tells me that she's, my ble or she's the blessing to me that God gave me. Amen. <laughs> and she truly is. Amen? Amen? Because I had little expect. The one thing I didn't expect was her. <laughs> Amen? And God has, has given her to me and has blessed my soul with her. You know, God wants the best for you. And when you say, Lord, give us. I'm not praying selfishly. Bless the body of Christ with your will, with your leadership, with your supply. Wow. And we should be thankful for it. So, the Bible says, give us this day our daily bread. Amen? That's the physical world. God's in charge of the things in this world. God made these things. They're under His dominion. He, display, or he supplies them and distributes them according to His will in our life. And He does take care of His children. But look at the next verse. Oh, my goodness. And forgive us our debts. You see, God is involved in supplying our physical existence, our physical needs every day. But He's also involved in a, uh, in a spiritual strengthening of His children every day. And forgive us our debts. When we become a child of God, I think to better understand this verse, we have to know that when we become His child, we become responsible to obey the law of God, the commandments of God. Remember what 1 John chapter 2 says, if you say you love me, keep my commandments. Amen. So our job 
as a believer is simply to obey our Heavenly Father. And you know, the Word of God is there for us to, be, to learn what we should do. You know, the Bible is full of do's and don'ts. And most of them are not suggestions. They are our Father setting the standard of our obedience daily that we might be strong spiritually in that obedience. And I found that God does say, that he, or, or He does say here, uh, uh, for, and forgive us our debts. So I'm responsible to obey the things of God and understand there is a learning curve. Okay, when you first get saved, you don't know everything. And in fact, I've been saved 40 some odd years and I don't know everything. In fact, the more I study, the more I don't know. Amen. But there's a learning curve. And God understands that when we're saved, according to the Bible, we're saved as infants in the Word. We are as newborn babes desiring the sincere milk of the Word that we might grow thereby. So there's a learning curve, and God receives our obedience according to the learning curve. As we understand and know, then we are responsible to do it or not to do it. Amen? But how many times with knowledge do you not do what you're supposed to? Or you do something you're not supposed to. Amen? We either don't do it or we do it. Amen? And, and I found that the learning curve does not allow for us to be in disobedience in the things of God. And so there's a need in our life that God wants us to come, and prayer uncovers this, and He says, and forgive us our debts. See, you have a debt to the Holy Word of God. You have a debt as a child has a debt to a father to honor his father and to obey his father. Children, obey your father in the Lord, for this is right. Amen? So that we have this, this responsibility to do the things of God. But here's what I found out about raising children, and I know it's true when, with God and us as well. They don't always do what they're supposed to. And sometimes it's by accident that they break some rule. Didn't mean to. It happened. And sometimes we do it intentionally. Amen? And I'm just speaking for myself in my experience as a Christian. You've probably had the same experience. Have you ever prayed about something and you knew God said no? And you did it anyway? That old adage, it's easier to get forgiveness than it is to get permission, does not work with God. And so the Bible says, uh, uh, forgive us our debts. You see, I found out that it's necessary in my life to humble myself before God and ask Him for forgiveness if I want to be strong spiritual, spiritually speaking. I cannot walk in disobedience and be spiritually strong, be nigh unto God, drawing close to God. I cannot do that if I'm walking in disobedience. But now I want to tell you, and we've done this, we've read this verse before, but I'm going to use it here because it's so applicable. God expects us to obey. First John. This is awesome. Read this. First John chapter 2, and I know you already know it. First John chapter 2, verse 1. My little children, these things I write unto you, that you sin not. Use the Word of God. The, the, the Holy Word, that Word that's alive and quick and powerful, use it and obey it. And the Bible says here, uh, 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 and, and sin not. Allow that Bible to declare what sin is to you. And through that learning curve, grow in the things of God, become a mature Christian, and walk in the Spirit, walk in obedience to God. That's what the Word's for, is to tell you how to live your life holy. My little children, these things I write unto you. That you sin not. Do you know if you keep the Word of God in the forefront of your mind and the Word of God hidden in your heart, you'll walk in holiness? 
Jesus said, Be ye holy as I am holy. But look at what he says. But I know that you are warring a, a, a battle inside. There's a war in you of the old flesh and the new flesh, the old man and the new man. And sometimes you're going to lose. Amen. That's not permission to sin. That's understanding that we are still fleshly. We are still in this body of sin. And it sometimes still will trip us up. And God says, I want you to be holy. Do not sin. Use the word of God. Be holy as I am holy. But when you do sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Listen. When you get saved... You are created in the likeness of Christ in holiness. That's your condition. I don't know how long it lasts until sin creeps back in. I'd like to say when I first got saved, I probably went five years before I ever sinned. I'd like to say that. I wish I could say that. But we war a war, don't we? And when we fail... It separates us in fellowship, not in salvation, but in fellowship. When you sin against God, when you disobey the rule of God, when you disobey that walk of holiness, fellowship is severed. Now, maybe not totally, but it makes a little cut. It's kind of like, have you ever swung on one of them old swings back in, you know, when you're in a kid? We used to have one that swung out over, is that the right word, swung? Anyway, it went out over a, a creek. And we'd go down there, me and my brothers and the dance, there was four or five of those boys, and we'd get down there and we'd swing out there and drop off in the water. And the rope was about this big around. But, and it had probably four or five, I don't really remember, cords of different rope that was woven together or rolled together like a rope is to make a big rope. Well, up about eight or ten feet, up near where that was tied to the tree, there was only two of those strands left. And we swung on that thing. It never, ever broke. Never, ever. Amen? And we swung on that thing for six or seven years. Back out every summer. Pow! It was great fun. And every time you swung out there, you looked up. <laughs> Just wondering if those two, about as big as your finger, those two ropes, probably we were fortunate that none of us weighed what we were going to weigh some years later. Uh, amen? I tried that down at, uh, in the valley. They, we were down there on that uh, Freehold River, and there's a place down there way back around a bend where somebody's tied a rope up in there. And uh, uh, I remembered that swing we had when we were kids. And when we got down there, I went around up that Freehold River, and I got up on that bank. At that time, I weighed 270 pounds. And I grabbed that rope and, like I was 15, and I ran out there, and I went, whew! I couldn't no more hold my weight on that rope. I just <laughs> right into the water. So fortunately, we were small back then. Amen. If you understand what sin is, and you're saved, but now you do something that you're wrong, that's wrong. A little bit of that fellowship is cut. Every day you swing on that rope that brings you close to God in fellowship, but there's a little bit of it been cut. Not quite as good as it once was. And each time you fail, a little bit more is cut. And unless there's something done with that failure, sooner or later, though you may be saved and on your way to heaven, that rope of fellowship is going to be severed. But this is what God said. This is what the model prayer says. Forgive us our debts. Amen? He's talking about our responsibility to the obedience of holiness. And we breach that responsibility. So he gives us 1 John 1, 9. He says, if you'll confess it, I'll cleanse it. Amen. And restore you. That means he's going to reach down where that rope of fellowship is and take those pieces that have been cut and bring them right back together in Amen. one solid rope of fellowship. That's good. Forgive us our debts. 
Wouldn't we be in a mess if God didn't forgive us? Now, I'm not talking about salvation forgiveness. I'm talking about daily living forgiveness. You see, God gives us an exit that we can say, God, I'm sorry. I humble myself before you and I confess myself that I have sinned. I have breached my responsibility to be holy. Amen? Because we don't always achieve what we should. Amen? And you do know that once that fellowship has begun to be breached, you don't have any solution to it. That same rope that we used to swing on. We thought every summer what we could do, because you know a rope hanging out in the weather from year to year. The first guy every summer, the first young man, boy, that got up there when we went swimming, I started to say skinny dipping, when we went swimming, the first one that got up there and grabbed that rope always had to wonder, how much has it suffered through the winter? Is it still as strong as it was last year? And we've actually sat around when we were planning on going down to go swimming and talked about what can we do about that rope? You know, that rope's not safe. It's going to break. And we decided the worst thing that's going to happen is going to fall in the creek. And that's what we're going to do anyway. We swing out there and turn loose. So every, every summer, we would decide it was good for one more year. Amen? Forgive us our debts. I'm glad that God says, I'll take care of the fellowship you take care of the sin. Amen. If I confess my sin, then he kicks in with righteousness. Amen. Amen. I'm going to stop right here because we're going to get into a part that I think is critical. Because then he puts this on, and would to God, I shouldn't say that, you'll think I'm not kidding. Well, I'm really not. Would to God that God would give me forgiveness of my failures without this causative phrase. Jesus said, pray ye after this manner. Forgive us our debts. Did you read the rest of it? As we forgive our debtors. That's a causative effect. That is, God says, I'll do this if you do that. Hmm? You ever made a deal with your kids? I know he has. I, I remember one of them. If you want a car, oh, oh, Stephen did too with his oldest one. If you want a car, I'll pay half of it. You pay the other half. And I can remember Stephen's son he said, well, I want a $5,000 car, so you give me $2,500, and I'll put it in the bank and start adding to it. And Brother Stephen said, no. You put $2,500 in the bank, and then I will add to it. That's exactly what he's saying here. If you want forgiveness, put some forgiveness in the bank. And I will, this is exactly what he says, what you put in the bank, I will match. Amen. I used to get letters all the time from, uh, oh my goodness, the guy down, uh, the preacher, I can't think of his name, my goodness, Thor, no, not Thor, over in uh, somewhere got that school, who? No, in, in the East Coast. I can't think of his name. My goodness alive. He died some years ago, and his school's still over there. It used to be a Baptist thing. Now it's just a college. Uh, Falwell. Jerry Falwell. He used to get letters from Jerry Falwell. Jerry Falwell was a master at fundraising. Amen? And you could tell that because God put him in a ministry that needed money to grow it and to develop what he had to develop for the glory of God's sake. But I used to get letters from him, and he'd say this. I've got a man 
that said up to whatever it would be, and I'm going to just fill in a number here, I don't know if it's correct or not, to $10 million, that if you give a dollar, he'll match your dollar. And I always thought, why don't you just get him to give his dollars? It won't matter whether you get mine or not. <laughs> but the idea was, if you give it, he'll match it. It's exactly the principle here. Forgive us, Lord, as we forgive. As I put in the bank forgiveness, then God, you match that forgiveness in my life. Amen. Isn't that awesome? I thought it was. I thought first time I read that, wow! And then I figured out how hard it was to forgive. <laughs> If you don't think it's hard, it says, as, uh, uh, as, as you have forgiven us, Lord, or as we forgive others, because you've forgiven us. Do you know how hard it was for God to forgive you? He had to put His Son on the cross. And then I found out this forgiveness stuff, not so easy, because He wants me to put it in the bank before He matches it. That's what I said too, sister. I'm trying to hurry. I am. I am going to stop. Because I want to tell you this little story. Have you ever been angry at somebody and remembered these verses? And you say to yourself, well, what can it cost? I'm mad and I'm not getting glad. I'm mad, I'm angry, I'm wounded, and I'm not forgiving. God says He won't forgive you unless you forgive. That's all right. He can just keep this portion. You ever said that? Do you know how disobedient that is? Then you become not a point of blessing to God, but a point of correction to God. We've got to stop. We'll, we'll finish this next week because I want to deal with this whole idea here about forgiving as you're forgiven, and I've got quite a bit to say about it. I started this lesson today, and I was only going to get enough for this evening's services, and I ended up with eight pages, and we've only done three of them. So, stand with me if you would. We'll be dismissed in a word of prayer. Well, I guess we'll do a short invitation too first. Lord God, as we come to you this evening, we pray that you will just forgive us, Lord, and help us to understand that we need to put into the bank of forgiveness that you might match it, that our request for forgiveness when we fail holiness, Lord, uh, depends on how much we are willing to forgive others who fail in our life. Lord, it's a very, very difficult verse, and yet one very profitable in grace. So bless Lord tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll sing one verse of invitation. If you need to come, you come. Uh, as we sing, what page do you want to play? 17. Page 17. Have thine own way. We'll just sing one verse.